Okay, here's the stuff from the second pick here. Uh, there's like, I think a couple kids' bikes. It could even be three bikes. Say two bikes, ladder, an old awning, uh, exercise bike, an IBM computer, but mostly stripped out, I believe. There's, a mo there's also a monitor in there and all kinds of odds and ends. You see. Oh yeah, it's got some, uh, oops. Let's see what's in here. Let's see the drive, board's gone. It's actually pretty scrapped out pretty good actually. Here's the inside. Hmm, not bad. And some odds and ends. Also, uh, there's a bunch of uh, miscellaneous stuff in boxes in the toaster and you know, some pots and pans I got. Uh, this is from a viewer that watches my channel quite often. His name is John. He lives in Vancouver, so I appreciate it, John. Thank you very much for calling me up and getting some salvage and odds and ends. Um, here's the uh, salad dish. It has the feed horn. I actually got two salad dishes yesterday. One from Kai. That you saw her, uh, like, what she gave me yesterday. But then I also got another salad dish. Um, I got this monitor here. Um, got all sorts of things here, but it's a little bit mixed up, hard to tell right now. There's a paper shredder in there, a couple water bottles, a uh, vacuum. But, you know, like I say, I got an okay load considering I had an inspection anyways. I was in the areas, so it kind of worked out pretty good. So I'm going to end up putting this material, whatever I can, in my big truck. Right, and like we had a conversation with... Like these bikes are kind of look like they're okay condition, but you can't get rid of them. No one wants them. You can call your best buddy or whoever. You know, bikes are handed down by you know the grandparents or the family. The kids always want new bikes. Everybody seems to be spoiled out here, but it seems to be that you know bikes you can't give them away. You know, very hard, especially kids' bikes, and they outgrow them so fast, right? Look at this one here. It probably started with training wheels. And then the, then the frame got too small, the kid got too too big, because we're seasonal here too, right? So, usually we get a lot of rain, we only have a two or three, two or three months window of good weather, maybe four months. And the rains, like it's raining right now, so, so you don't really go bike riding, especially kids. So it's more of a summer type thing, spring, summer, um, and the bikes sit. So they get used maybe one season, and then the kids will grow them pretty quick. Which is a shame, but that's kind of what it is here. Let me look at the other side here. See what's on that side. I'm gonna throw a lot of stuff just directly in my truck right away. Oh yeah, there's, oh yeah, there's doorknobs. A bunch of doorknobs, some, some stainless steel. Um, these, these cups here. And I was getting text text messages once in a while. I was wondering who's giving me all these text messages, sending me pictures of scrap on different corners and. The, and finally I met the person, so it was really awesome. Really awesome to to meet up and stuff because you know I was getting texts and I wasn't really sure who it was and and then you know some texts they were good, right? They all leaded up to something, but sometimes I wasn't able to get to some of them and now you know now I know it's it's kind of that's awesome because I don't do a lot of a lot of hunting in the west side just because it's a, more richer class people there, they don't really throw too much out I think they pay for proper disposal you need the kind of the you know the mid-class you know because the mid-class you know they they throw lots of stuff out or give out or recycle but the very rich just pay for the garbage companies that come out pick it all up and that's it that's what I'm finding because in the west side these these homes are like anywhere from two to two to ten million dollars you don't never see any garbage out there I can drive around for hours and see nothing I mean you do find the odd thing once in a while but quite often uh, you don't find too much so anyways I'm gonna get started here um, get my gloves on and start rifling stuff in my truck I just want to get I'm gonna maybe go for a little cruise I've been doing paperwork all morning that's why I'm kind of starting late I've just been so busy Got a bunch of reports I gotta do and, uh, and I've been really slacking because I had the kidney stone stuff was bugging me and all that so I kind of 
a little bit behind in work, but anyways. There's a rate, got caught right in, right there. That's something a cute little bike here, but. Hmm. This one I might be able to give to somebody. Got a couple relatives that are pretty young. Like, that's a classy, nice looking bike there, I'll tell you, for kids. It's a Snow White or something, I think. Limited edition, so that's kind of a really cool bike. That one looks like it's. I'm gonna try to find someone for that one. It's a shame, otherwise, right? This box quickly here. And there's the doorknobs are here. Maybe like stainless steel. Lots of doorknobs. Tumblers. Some kind of filter or something. What is that thing? Hmm. Not sure. Look at that here. Lots of doorknobs. Look at that. Well, I think I'm just gonna smash it with a hammer. Like that's brass here, and I think I'm gonna smash that with a hammer. Let's just try one here, just for the hell of it. I can dig my hammer out somewhere. I could uh, see if that works. Hmm. Let me try my vice here. Seems to be pretty, pretty tough. Bet you put in a vice and just snap it and make go. That one's pretty tough. I haven't stripped any of these, so it might be a better way, maybe. Hmm. Like there could be a pin or something here, I'm not really sure. I thought it would be just easy to just knock off but obviously it's not that easy but a lot of things do get shredded right hmm it's pressed in there actually that one disappeared pretty quick hmm can't even see it it disappeared okay so it appears to be like pressed in there I just wonder if I could, uh... Because, you know, you can't sell these the way they are no more. They don't pay nothing for them, so you have to try to scrap them, I guess. Hmm. If I could, uh... There, it's coming off. That's brass. This is brass here, but I think it's gonna pound pound it out a little bit. I can pry it out, that's not pretty easy that one. I'm not too worried about that one. Hmm. Well I think there's a pin right there. See the pin? Yeah, it's a pin in there. So I see the problem here now. See, press this in here. 
See, I've never done these before, so there it is. Okay, so they're not that hard to strip, actually. It's a little, if you look over here, sometimes you gotta smash a few things before you see. See, that's like in here. There's a pin there. If you can see that pin there, see that? Push that through. So, so they're pretty easy to clean, actually. Look, that's a solid piece of brass, nice and clean. Let me get another one. And maybe a, a flat screwdriver or something similar like that. Basically, okay, the pins were actually right there, almost exposed. Okay, I got a little screwdriver. Yeah, the screwdriver ended up taking it. Cause I lost one at work. I'm taking it. Okay, let's see here. There. There it is. Wow, very easy to clean. Never knew that. These are probably from the 60s, right? Imagine how many I scrap like that. This your steel center. And then all you do is you pull this. This will come off pretty easy. One's free. This is a matter of, you know, just getting a better screwdriver, probably know this is really not that hard. So put a magnet on here, just double check, it looks like brass. No. Okay, well it showed you, they come off super easy. I guess if you install locks like these, you know, right? To me, I was always wondering how they got, they screwed that on there. They're a pretty good system, pretty easy actually. Okay, so... If you get those type of locks, don't forget to just be a little closer look at, at the lock itself. And, and there's really, this doesn't come off like you're kind of like stuck here, right? So, and then these screws are buried in there. So, there, if you look right closely right there, let me just you know, put this back on here. If you look right there, see there, that little button there? Press this in. That's it. Bang. Wow. Very impressive. And John, awesome, huh? Thank you. Thank you. Got a little piece of brass there. I like that. Okay, so I'm going to start getting all this organized here a little bit. Um, just going to rifle throw it in the truck there for now. But I'm going to take, take something apart in a minute here. And then I'll show you. So stand by. Let me just move stuff around. Okay, so I just want to show you. A little piece of brass, like a little bushing here. Bit of a pain to get it out, but you know, I finally used the axe. It's the only way you can get I can figure I get it out. It's just because it's um it's kind of pressed on there. It's just a small piece, but still brass pressed on there makes it kind of hard it might be something simpler but it seems to work pretty good let's know where that doorknob went so you know strip them completely I see it. 
kind of hard to get to it, but I'll try. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now, but just rake maybe. There it is, yep. Yeah. Almost didn't look like a door at all, but still smashed. Like they say, the first one's the hard one. After that, it's easy, right? Okay. I guess you could put in a vise and maybe use a uh, vice grips and turn it off, possibly. Hard to say, but pressed in there pretty good. I'll tell you, like I say, it's uh, quite a bit of brass on these things, actually. But these are from the 60s. You know, these door knobs from the 1960s. Like that. The reason why I'm taking the, these nuts off just gives me a little more clearance. clearance otherwise we need a slight angle I stripped all doorknobs off already so they were pretty easy I have one there that's a little bit complicated I can't figure it out it's like solid brass okay like this that one's long gone but try this one here Trying to be soft on it, otherwise it will just seem to fly away. Okay, so this is all done. And it's not really much, but you know, the, if you have a bunch of doorknobs, then you might get a pound, maybe have that. So that's all doorknobs. Another one here is going to be done. A few more still, but. This one is kind of a bit of a complicated one. I pulled, I pulled kind of a, some sort of pin out of here already, but it's still not, not really working. I'm gonna turn it a certain way, I'm not sure, but don't know what's going on. Bit of a mystery one here. It's almost like it's welded in here or something. I have to maybe smash this knob off here. And it might work. I think it's something new with this knob. I had another one similar to this with a lock on it. I couldn't get it apart. I had to smash the knob. Then under the sleeve here, it had the releaser and it was easy after. Okay, well, just wanted to show you there. And also, a little bit of brass on the end here. You have to peel it off. Okay, not bad. I got this uh, pot set here, it actually doesn't look too bad. I'm not sure if it's new or not, but it looks really, really clean, like it's never been used, so... Could make a good camping set. You know, if you're on your camping or you're doing outdoor stuff. It looks like brand new to me. So I took the two feed horns off. Two feed horns, another feed horn over there, and then I got a little bit of brass. That's the feed horn, and here's another uh, splitter box I took. The wire I got from yesterday. That's a power supply. These gotta be clean still. Uh, this is what I have so far for brass from yesterday. Uh, another piece of brass there. A little bit of stainless steel. Um, zinc. Is that zinc? This pot metal. It's actually off like a um, like a candy dispenser. It's pot metal anyways, it's still like, it's like aluminum. Got the printer here, I'm going to take it parts. I'm going to take that, uh, 
a monitor part two in a second. And I want to show um, my buddy who uh, gave me all the stuff here. His name's John. So at least I'll show him, and you can see what's really inside that thing. Considering it's his old one, it's probably like 10, 15 years old, probably. Okay, so let me just start cleaning a couple things here, and then I'm gonna make a little staging area and I take that monitor apart. So at least before it gets too dark here. Okay, stay tuned. Just a monitor. It's a little CRT with a glass tube. It's a UMAX, Max Vision, V5 or something like that, BS or something, I don't know. But anyways, uh, I took out four screws here, one screw here, and I cut the cord off. I saved the plug here for uh, gold recovery. This will go in the shred, or not shred, it'll go into the, the wire. This will go in the shred here. It's it's a, it's got a little bit of wire with a ferrite core. It's still it's metal here, so that'll go in the shred directly. So here's uh, the case. Okay, this one is heavy plastic. Really nothing there of value, which is plastic. Um, what I do here before I touch anything, there's, there's um, where you look at the picture tube. You have the tube here, and you have the high voltage lead to the tube here. Sometimes these could be like it's like a capacitor almost could hold a charge and it could shock you So just to take that uh, precaution Cut this lead first and you have less chance of getting a shock, but you know You're at your own risk what you do anyways, but I just want to point that out to you And what I'll do is just cut whatever wires I can I mean, there's so, so many wires, like it's, it's a maze of wires, and this should, should almost come right out. This one's not coming out for some reason, but sometimes, you know, they're jammed in there a bit, but usually it just should slide right out. I'm not sure what's going on here, but oh, there it is. So I'm not really taking this any like taking or scrapping the whole thing. I'm just taking the thing apart just to expose what's here, so you guys can see. Especially my viewer has never seen inside of a CRT. And this is the guy where I got all all this stuff from, half of the stuff, anyways. So um, there's no. Sometimes I have a heat shield or uh, actually RF shield inside it's aluminum this one didn't have it so now we have this could be a good ic chip nice and long some more ic chips over here heat sinks for aluminum bunch with transistors more heat sinks here little transformers which are not that great this could be a little bit better so it's kind of a a green and brown board and then here is another transistor or uh, tra I see chips here and a bunch of transistors. Transistor over there. There's another IC chip. So that's your bulk of your circuit board right there. So just so you know that, uh, I mean, it looks like a little bit newer technology, this one. It was probably one of the latest ones, I think, before they went into um, flat screens or LCD or whatever they did. So, and now, you have this wire here, it's a degaussing cable, um, something to do with uh, you know, the TV itself, it's just part of the circuit, but I pull this out because it's copper, it's like it looks like electrical tape around black, like black electrical tape around copper, copper wire. Uh, sometimes they come aluminum, but this seal being so heavy. If I cut it, I always cut it closer to here because this is where the end is here and it's all, all screwed up with tape and everything. Yeah, it looks like copper. Copper inside. Too bad it's a little bit dark here. I hope you guys can see it clearly. There's copper there. So nice and heavy cable. So we're stripping. And then you'll have... This is where the yoke is, but there's no can't see nothing here, I don't have glasses with me, but... Okay, here it is starting to come off. There. 
Okay, before I show you that one, here's another degaussing type cable. Same, same copper, heavy, right? Um, you can strip, I think you, you, you score it with a knife and it just kind of, uh, it's good solid copper. It's not solid, but it's stranded, but it's solid for weight. So here's your pitch tube. Basically the rest is a tube only here, nothing of value. There's a little bit um, tinted copper wire. You know, for years and years I never took this stuff. But anyways, it's tinted copper. If you want to take it, it's there. I mean, when you're scrapping stuff out you're there, you might as well pop it off, right? Okay, there it is right there. The CRT tube. Careful, it's, uh, if you smash that in a certain way, it could explode like a bomb. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a vacuum pressure in there. So, um, I remember when we were kids, we used to smash these old TVs on the other side, and, it, and the, the whole thing would blow up. Like, and I remember smashing one of those things. Old school TV, probably from the you know, 60s. Smash it dead centered, one in the air like four or five feet. It was like really explosive. So, hey, dude, I parked there, so I'm gonna park there in a few minutes. Oh, you can't park there? Well, I park there all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, so maybe you should just, uh, you know where? well, no, just park further up. Oh, yeah, park like closer up there, and then I can at least get my truck in there. Oh, no problem. Man. Yeah, no problem. Well, like another 15 feet. A mystery to park in. Yeah, it's because some guy complained to the city and said, hey, there's, you know, they're blocking roadways, so if you really park, Right here, you'll get a ticket, maybe, right? Uh, yeah, I was looking at like all that. Yeah, road. just don't take a chance, but just go straight up there, right there. Thanks. Okay, no problem, buddy. Okay, so I hate these guys coming to nowhere in the park. I've been parking there for like 10 years, 15 years, probably. Okay, so here's your uh, copper. That's your main copper, here. It's called the yolk. That's, um, ferrite type uh, metal yeah as long as I can get in there no problem yeah how long are you staying for Just like 20, okay you're okay no problem right. thanks sir uh. so yeah you too so anyways um, you'll have copper here and you'll have a copper on the other side here um, usually these are pretty good because they're like pretty concentrated <coughs> Like to have a, quite a bit of copper for a, such a small TV, right? Some picture tubes don't even have this much copper like this, you know what I'm saying? But being a little TV or CRT, you get a TV compared, a comparable TV like this for size of tube. It's not nothing like the copper like this. That's why I don't mind grabbing these because it's got quite a bit of copper. Here, but everything's so glued in here, doesn't want to go. Anyways, um, like you usually, what I do is just crush these like that. But you know, there's ways of taking apart if you just spend a little time. But I'm trying to rush this procedure here just to show you a little bit of copper in here. Okay, so, yeah, this is kind of glued on harder than normal, but that's your bulk copper, not bad. You just got to knock this, this steel off here, iron, and then here you have more copper. See the ratio of copper out of a monitor? So compare that to a TV tube, just a TV. It would be nothing like this. A TV might only have this much copper. Monitor has like double the amount of copper. And I would say probably at least, I mean, three quarters of a pound probably of copper, possibly. Half a pound for sure. I'm not sure how, how much iron weight is weighing right now, but I feel about a pound right now, I'm thinking. But maybe three quarters of copper. So that's it on that. So pretty straightforward. Just wanted to show, 
show my uh, my viewer. He was kind of interested in what was in one of those. So I figured, hey, it's the best time. I might as well take his own CRT apart, right? I don't know why some aren't coming off, some aren't coming off. What is that? Okay. That's a standard uh, bar. Uh, reason why I stripped it is it's rusty was in the water and I don't really trust having things that are corroded or rusty to reuse right because you don't know why they threw them out in the first place I got this from Kai another viewer but it, this is the brass inside here see the brass the little brass rods in there so basically we're ending with a, a switch of plastic with a little switch with your on and off switch here I mean you could deal with this on a tread maybe to switch itself or you can there's contacts in there that are supposed to be silver but you know what silver is really not worth much right now if it was like 100 bucks an ounce or something or 200 bucks an ounce and you know I would say hey it's, it's ide ideally to do it right but just uh silver is only worth 50 cents a gram basically right now that's the brass that came out of that thing. So I'd say that's not really that bad for brass. And then you have a circuit board, a couple of pieces of wire, a couple of LEDs there to light it up. That's it. So not too bad. I mean, I'm pretty pretty happy. I, uh, maybe I'll take this thing apart if I could. Oh, turn it. It's a little bit off ink came off it right oh, it's a heavy hard to get there it is okay, there's cords there Hug. so all I want is the circuit board I don't care about anything else in there really to be honest it's got a circuit board I can use it's full of ink Problem when these things get wet, the ink comes out, it starts going all over the place. Have to determine where it's going to be. This would be over here somewhere. Hmm. Not really sure. A lot of times there's no plugs, so I'm not sure how this is how this even works. Unless there's something broken out of here. That's your power right here. Let's see if I pry this off here. Hmm. So it's just a cover. Cover over that. Probably start taking these apart. You just deal with so much plastic. I understand where the circuit board is even on here. It's a weird one. Circuit boards in here. It was like maybe like a wireless one or something. But no, this is a, maybe because it's really old or something. But circuit boards are actually right here that I want. More plastic here. Hmm. Mm, the circuit board's right there. Wow, this I never had one that was like that. Look at that. Hmm. Unbelievable. So I got a circuit board here. I'm gonna pop the circuit board off. It's not, it's not coming off. It should come off. The 
because it's too big or something. Okay, add another bit here. That's what I'm saying. When you start popping these apart, you know you got a little bit of metal. That's why I like to just when they're easy, just throw them in a shred. Like if they're really cheap, I'll just throw them in a shred the way they are. Because non plastic and headaches, not worth it. I'm not sure why. I can't, can't really see exactly what it is. I think it's a hex, maybe. Sometimes it's easier just to pop it off. Okay, so we have a little bit of wire. That's your power board. We got a spool, uh, a transformer with some spooled on copper, heat sink, another another spooled on. So you can take these off in the heat sink here, right? So now we have the actual printer itself, the main part. You know, it's like it's not even that late right now, and it's just like it looks like it's nine o'clock at night. It's just the, it's so so cloudy. It's like some heavy, heavy, like heavy rains coming shortly. So just gotta hurry up on this here. I understand why this bolt comes off? The other ones didn't come off. Okay. Oh wow, this is actually quite nice. Look at that. That's actually a pretty decent board. Look at big flat pack here. Another type of flat pack. Four ICs, five ICs. Wow. I would say these, that's another IC too here. It's actually pretty gold plating here. It's actually a pretty decent board. I'm pretty impressed. Usually they're. It would be maybe half the size of that, and that's it. Nothing else. Older school here. So we got why. older technology had more IC chips. Now the IC chips are so so advanced that they're so small, and it, one little IC chip can do all this basically. So I would say these 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 are memory. I think. I would think. Like your RAM type chips, and then your main CPU type. So it's actually really nice. We're taking it apart. I'm glad I did, actually. So, John, that's your printer there, taking apart. The only good part of the whole printer is this little board. Five IC chips here, or six or whatever. Closer to get the gold dream happening. I'm gonna try to. My actual goal is to get enough gold together and make it a ring out of e-waste. So. That's my goal. So right now I don't have really much. Like I got about one, one jar. It's like a peanut, like a cashew jar, a two kilogram jar, or one kilogram or two kilo. But it's a pretty big jar. But those plastic jars, that's actually a heavy mortar. Since I'm here, I'm taking the mortar off. It's another mortar on this side. So, but you know, if I had like ten pounds icy chips or twenty pounds. You know, I might get a few grams, right? Four or five grams, hard to say. But I'm trying to get the higher, high yield chips, not the duds, the better chips that I know that are gold. Because a lot of chips don't really have gold. But you want to get mostly the RAM, RAM type chips, and you want to get those um, BGAs, the gold, gold corner chips. These are the ones you really want. That's where the gold, gold will come. Bang it off because I couldn't get couldn't get the piece off. Wow, it's a little bit dark. That's some of my problems. Too dark. 
Just hope you guys can see this on video. So I pulled another mortar in here. So I can get it out. There it is. And you know, some of these mortars are really powerful mortars. For guys making more control, you know, more control items or you know, you make these little robots, different things. These mortars are ideal for that. Got nice brass ends on there, brass gears. That's a heavy mortar for its size. So this type of stuff is really good. You can make, you know, more control cars, bots, whatever. So what I might end up doing is maybe get, start salvaging some of this stuff and maybe try to sell on eBay because I think there's people out there looking for the stuff and if you have to buy that mortar, they can charge you a hundred bucks just for that mortar because you're buying something that's specialized which is already in here that mass produced people don't realize when you buy this particular item it costs more than the whole printer itself that's why these printers you throw them in the garbage once they're broken they're gone they're worth nothing that's what I find same with the car you know if you pieced every car part out of a car it'd be worth two hundred thousand dollars it's only worth sixty thousand you know what I'm saying or maybe more that's what I'm saying. Parts, parts are very valuable, but there's certain things I can't sell here. Period. Like I can't sell any fridge stuff locally, and you know I don't want to be shipping a tray out or something stupid across the country. You know I don't want to do that. But like like small things like this, you know ideal things for projects and you know special things that are harder to find. Like you know how would you say, you know if this mortar was say ten bucks on eBay for instance, right? someone implement into their dream right versus me you know trying to find a part number and then say hey it's 200 dollars new and trying to get big money no sell it reasonable to someone who can make something out of this not knowing that you know just as the size of mortar just experimenting with it right that'd be ideal for somebody right so anyways here's uh the ink cartridges here Because most people buy things, like when you go to, say, a, a flea market or something, they don't particularly look for something, but when you see something that catches your eye, they have a dream of, of doing something with it, right? So that's why I say if you can bundle, a, you know, 10 of those mortars up and, and charge, you know, 30, 40 bucks or whatever, you know, something, you know, reasonable enough where the people will buy it, right? Is that only two colors here or three so that was a three color one maybe and one black so you can imagine your three colors in here how long this cartridge lasts and that cartridge is probably like 30 bucks each so i'm saying so prices are ridiculous sometimes i see here's my gold the gold plating here i have to pry this section out here there's a clip here and i can pull this off there so now if I take this apart the yeah, circuit boards there but we'll figure how it's how it's put in here So there it is. You got your gold traces here that go to the cartridge. Then you have, you know, little IC chips here. They're little blobs, but they're so pretty sophisticated IC chips probably that run the printer, printer portion of it. Okay, that's it. I'm running out of daylight, so I think I'll have to cut it, cut it off here. So now we know what's in this print, this printer. We know what's in this monitor. Uh, pretty good successful day yesterday I think it did really good let me show you my truck I want to dump this pie tomorrow sometime I can see it fairly full you know, full enough for now and then I have over here I have hot water tank exercise bike 
and a stove. And I have the wrought iron table. It's pretty heavy. It's actually wrought iron, but one, one part of the leg is broken. So, be ideal if I can cut it, but I don't want to blow like a $10 blade to cut it in a few pieces, so I'll probably leave it the way it is. But, so I was almost thinking maybe I can jam all this in tomorrow in my red van. See how that goes. But I might do a drive tonight, just around my na neighborhood to see if there's something new. Because it was actually garbage day or recycling day today, I think. Sometimes there's stuff kicking around. I'll have to look. Okay, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like. All comments uh, are appreciated. I appreciate all the comments and everybody, all the good good birthday wishes, wishes I got from everyone and all that. So, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.